welcome to Neo 6502 TV, where we talk about the Neo 6502 single board computer. Um, hello, dear friends of the channel. Hope you're doing well out there in Argon and other single board computer land. Um, regular viewers of the channel might be slightly taken aback by the fact that I'm not actually talking about the Argon SBC right today and today we're talking about the Neo 6502 and without further ado let's have a look at him here yeah, this came in the post uh, already a couple of weeks ago been taking forever to get time to do this so fetching little box from our friends at Olimex the best thing to come out of Bulgaria since the previous single board computer made by Olimex um, lovely here, uh, made in 2005. This is currently sort of reserved for developers. It's not for main release. We'll get into that a little bit further. What do we have in the box? We have these fetching little rubber nubbin feet. By the way, um, they don't fit very well in the board. The ones which came with my Argon uh, Light 2 were better. And here it is. Look at it. Isn't it cute? What a little beauty. And cute it is because it's tiny. That's a double A battery. Look at the size of that. It is genuinely the size of a credit card, and it packs quite a punch. It has a 6502 over here, and you might just be able to see there, there's a Raspberry Pi logo on there. That's the RP2040. Let's go back and see um, what that means in practice. So in April, Olimex announced that they were going to investigate um, doing this. Building a computer which, like the Argon, has a uh, vintage or a, a retro um, type of 8-bit computer. On the Argon, it's the Z80. On this is the 6502, which is a great processor. It was in the Apple II, which I have one over here. Uh, the enhanced version, the 6510, was legendary in the Commodore 64 uh, and many, many others. So 6502, so on the one hand, 8-bit retro processor. And then you have a modern microcontroller um, on the other side doing a everything else and we'll get into those into just a, a moment I just have to point on the github when you uh, on the home github all the links will be in the description below here it is again there's a beautiful description in the intro the w65c02s so that's the version of the 6502 um, lives in the matrix and thinks there is real RAM and real other interfaces around it but the truth is it's all emulation of real life the RP2040 emulates the RAM memory the video, I.O., and even the clock, right? So what does that mean? I love the matrix metaphor, like the 6502 is there. I'm a processor. I'm getting instructions, and I can address memory, and I can write to I.O. ports, and I can play things to screen. I am a real computer. And on the other side, what you have is this RP2040 little microcontroller, which is saying, yes, 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 and just uh, banging um, bits and bytes into the wires of the 6502, saying, yeah, yeah, this is totally ram this is completely not fail fake so truly the matrix right so i, I love that metaphor Anyway, here's the little guy in cell. Let's let, let's switch uh, or let's have a quick look at the processors. Nothing um, crazy about them. Quite familiar. However, you will see why they've been chosen. The RP2040, which is actually from Raspberry Pi, it's kind of Raspberry Pi's answer to the Arduino system on a chip. Tiny little microcontroller. You can run C. You can run even micro Python, whatever. But it costs a euro or a buck a pop, and this is already um, a retail. Over here, the 6502, I wasn't able to get a pricing on that, but it's in a similar range. Both of these chips are in very, very low single-digit um single digit uh, euros, dollars, pounds, whatever, Swiss francs, they're all on parity at the moment. And if you combine them, you get this uh, little uh, guy over here and uh, you get him for a very attractive price. The original, in the original post, um, the uh, Olimex mentioned that they were shooting for, or they mentioned that the Raspberry Pi did 25 to 30 euros. I could swear there was a post somewhere where they were shooting for 15 as a retail price. If you compare that to the Argon at 50, that's an attractive proposition. Now, is it as powerful as the Argon? No. And by the way, this development board or this, this early release board is more at 30, but still two thirds of the price of an Argon. So let's go dig in and let's have a quick look at the guy again. So it's there and super minimal. The first thing you'll notice is the absence of an SD card slot, right? That's different from the Argon. That's just different from the ESP32 SBC Fab GL um, because the only memory you have is the RAM and the flash, which is in the 
the RP2040. Suck it. In that, I think it's got... I don't know how much it goes. I have to look. But everything has to live in there. The firmware, which is going to emulate all the hardware, it's going to be your RAM, it's going to be your video RAM, it's going to be your program storage, whatever, all on that chip. Um, and then from the top right, USB-C here for power. There's an audio jack, which is, uh, you. it also has an onboard buzzer. If you disable this jumper, then it goes to the audio jack. It has a real, supposed, a real USB host. We'll get into that as well. And then it's an HDMI. And that, and then you have this uh, edge connector there, which is the entire bus. So the entire bus of the 6502 is exposed. You can hook up a um, uh, an oscilloscope to this and watch your memory go up and down or logic analyze or whatever the heck you want. And then you have the UX, um, which is the proprietary um or, or rather, well, it's designed by Olimex, but I believe it's an open standard of a way of just having a 10-pin connector to connect other stuff. And Olimex makes uh, lots of uh, lots of add-on. So that's what it's there. And um, um, if you go to the, I'll, I'll go to the unboxing video, which I did. When you first connect this thing, exactly nothing happens because this development port does not have any um, anything on it, right? There's no firmware, there's no RAM. So if you plug it in and give it power and go give it to uh, plug it into the um, HDMI, you won't see anything because the 2040, the our Raspberry Pi, or the, the microcontroller boots up and says, oh, I haven't been told to do anything. I'm not doing anything. So the first First thing which you have to do, and I wish I'd known this when I did that, my live thing, so I'm going to, uh, you don't even need to plug in the HDMI, you need to hold down this boot button, this is uh, normal for these devices, plug in the thing and then let go. Ah, uh, it also helps if you actually power up the USB, so USB has now got power, and you might have heard that little blongy dink, because when you hold the boot button and then give it power, it will report as a USB device. And there it is, there it is, right? So that's what it comes with is like, hi, I'm an RP, RP2. Uh, tell me what to do. And what you need to do is you simply need to copy over a UF2 file. So that is the thing. It's like an Eno file, I guess. It contains the thing, uh, the, the information that this device needs to run. Okay, so it's there. And we've uploaded. Oop, and it just went beep. It just went beep, and uh, it didn't even wait. I didn't even have to reset. Um, it, I think, it just uh, finished uploading the UF2, rebooted, and off we don't jolly well go. Let's see if that's actually what happened. Uh, sorry, my my thing is, uh, we'll do it slightly differently. Sorry, cable cable management issues right here. There we go, much better. And here we have him plugged in. He's fired up. And now if we go over here, ta-da! It's alive! It's utterly alive. So what you are seeing here is an HDMI output, which is captured by my computer, um, which... Um, um, uh, which is um, just coming from the Neo 6502 and the Nix 502, or the, what, what's actually running is a memulator, so it's emulating the memory and uh, presenting that to the 6502, and it, what it's running is a variant of the Wozmon monitor. So Steve Wozniak was the genius who did original hardware and software design on the Apple One and Two, kicked off basically the home and personal computer revolution, revolution I would say, and on the very first machine what you dropped into was a very basic or simple monitor. No basic, you're, you're right down at the hardware level. So I can like type in a hex address. Oh, I can't type in because I'm on my laptop and I don't have a keyboard plugged in. Next thing you have to know, this thing currently does not yet support USB keyboard. The team is madly working on it. So what actually happens is that the, let me just clear that setup. Nope, edit, uh, clear screen. Can I clear screen? Yeah, so at the moment, term, um, keyboard is emulated through the serial port. So when you don't hold the boot button, this thing actually reports as a COM port. That same USB connector um, uh, reports as a COM port. So I can now, because I've got this TerraTerm serial terminal here set up, um, uh, which you can't see. Hang on, I'll show it very briefly. See, I've got this little TerraTerm that's connected to the serial port and just sending my keyboard input over into the little Neo guy. So we're going to say, hello world, so it can type, right? We're here, it's amazing. We are in the thing, I absolutely love 
love it. And um, what are we going to type? If I type a particular memory address, it's going to tell me what's in that memory address. That's uh, what Moz Wasmon does. And if we go to the documentation of this thing, which is very, very little, it'll say, yeah, you can do control R to reset. You can, let's dump the VDU registers. Why the heck not, right? Let's dump a VDU register. Uh, oh, well, they're all at zero, so that didn't do very much. But the cool thing you can do is, um, which I didn't see here, but I saw over here where there was a Wasmon, um, a sort of Wasmon cheat sheet. Um, if you look, it's like running a program is simply you type in the hex address and put in the letter R. Now, if we combine that with the fact that apparently this release has basic at hex address BD47, so we're going to type in BD47, uh, not wrong button, BD47 space R, and we're in asking me for memory size, just hit enter, asking me for terminal width, hit enter, and we're in basic. We're in basic from 1977 by Microsoft, no less. And what can we do here? We can go, uh, I don't know, print, let's see, lose um, um, is awesome. Semicolon, and then 20, uh, go to 10, dun, dun, and then we run, and ta-da, we have massive graphics, and whatever, the 6502 is alive, it's working, it's printing. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever? I love this little guy. Um, one thing we will experiment with just once, I say just once, because um, I just heard it. Hang on, I will put the mic microphone near the speaker. And I, will, uh, and I will remove this little jumper because I've now plugged in my audio. I've got my active speakers over here fired up. And now I will just power cycle it and see if we hear a little doodoo-loot. That was a little bit loud, but you heard it. So we have video, we have sound, keyboard currently via the serial um, console, but that's how that kind of stuff works. So um, let's get back into uh, where we were. Come back here, you bugger. And let's see what else we can say about this. You've seen most of what's to be seen. Um, here's the uh, hardware diagram uh, from, from the GitHub. And I think that's also a thing of beauty. Yeah, you have a few details, but this tells me that basically the bus, right? It's just uh, so in the argon, the way that the um, the Z80 and the um, and the um, microcontroller, the ESP, talk to each other is via serial connection, which is fine, but comes with its own set of challenges. As far as I understand, and I might be wrong, correct me in the comments, um, from what I understand, that's not how that happened here. If uh, you want RAM to happen, you program, and the RP2040 just like changes some signals and some wires and says, yep, here's your RAM, here's your memory. So um, it might be closer to the old paradigm of... Um, of, you know, you have a hardware, uh, sorry, memory addresses for display and you poke into that and so on and so forth. So really looking forward to that. So, yep, I'll share the link to this um, and also to the instructions on how to use the Wasmon. Where can you buy these? You can buy these as uh, Olimex with the warning. This is a Protos type stage. It's not finished yet. It might change. Whatever I'm showing here might be hardware incompatible um, in, in, in the next release. And who cares? You can also get them on Tin. Um, over with Snake um, at uh, in if you're in the southern hemisphere in Aus Australia, he's pre-ordering, but I believe he might already be able to ship you some development boards. Where do we go from here? So I actually downloaded this thing. So um, Astralasto, who's uh, super active, Sasha, I think that is, who's super active on the Argon and other community, ported the um, this little memulator over into Platformio. So Platformio is a, uh, a plugin for Visual Studio Code, which makes developing these kind of things. Because remember, you're developing hardware, right? This is kind of 
Kubernetes for um, for nerds or for 8-bit nerds, right? Because Kubernetes and, and Docker and things like that, they abstract away the hardware layer. Well, it's the same thing we're doing here. I need a better graphics card. Program one. I need different memory management. Program one. I want the mouse to go upside down. Program one, because again, the 2040 is doing all of that in emulation. So um, you can download this thing. And if you get it to work, in my case, it didn't. I still have to fight some Thing. I've got like competing Python installations which are biting each other. But if you compile this thing, the output will be one of those UF2 files. So you can not just write your own operating system, you can write your own hardware. There are concerns on the Discord that, um, you know, they're hoping for some standardization because at the moment, anyone who builds this thing can use any screen mode they want. That makes it hard to pick. Uh, uh, the monitors which are compatible and the refresh rates and all that but hey come on you can program your own hardware wouldn't it be fun to do so bring back hercules i want hercules monochrome to come back um I will cut it here. That was a first look through. Really excited, as you can tell, way overdue. The Neo 6502. And by the way, did you check out the cool logo, right, which, which I made? Um, yeah, so uh, I'll stop there. There are some interesting things. Maybe I'll get the uh, platform you're working and we'll do some operating system hacking. As new UF2s, it's going to be a, a bit of a black market. Hey, man, you got any UF2s? Because you could just compile something which just plays, right? It's, it's coming. Early days, it's fascinating again to be here at the dawn of a new era of hardware, which was just an idea like, what, April to August? That's not even four months ago. Yeah, welcome to the 21st century. This is how we do stuff there. With that, I'm ready to sign off today. Uh, for today. If you like this sort of uh, content, do consider subscribing liking. I'm always grateful for more viewers on the channel. Um, I uh, plan to do more videos about the Neo as soon as I get more time to play with it. Um, do follow me on the old Mastodon. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you have um, ideas, if you have suggestions, if you have your own project which you'd like me re to review. Um, always here to serve the community. And uh, with that, I would just like to say that you're all a, b a bunch of single board computer addicts. I'm loser bum. You're all a bunch of 8, 16, 24, 32, 64, and 1024-bit legends, and I am out of here.